Ubuntu 24.04 LTS has been released. So we today are going to have a look at one of the community builds, that being Lubuntu. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that if you think you might want to see more Linux content. But we're going to go ahead and get right on into the video. So today we're going to talk about Lubuntu 24.04. Now I want to have a look at this because it's been a while since I've looked at a, a Lubuntu. I think I've only looked at one of them since they did the LXQT transition, which was like eight years ago. Lord, I've been doing this for a while. So, I did want to get into this particularly for one interesting aspect, and that is that Lubuntu is the only official community flavor that you can install without snaps. And they also, though, have a snap monitor for if you're using the regular install, just to alert you that snaps can take a little bit more time to load on first install on the system. And this is really good because Lubuntu is something you might use if you're using a much lower spec or maybe an older computer. You may not have the system resources to boot something up as fast as you might otherwise. And so we'll get a little notification in the bottom that snaps are still loading. So if you try and load Firefox, of course, it might take a while on the first boot of the system because snap is still doing things on the background. That being said, we're going to go ahead and start by looking at their release notes, and I'm going to provide a little bit of commentary, and then we will just look very briefly at the desktop installed. So we have, of course, the uh, this is an LTS, so it'll be supported until April 27. Of course, it might be included in some of the LTS extended builds, but I don't know that for sure. For sure, the regular Ubuntu is, but the LTS will follow three years of standard support. You can download this, or if you already have a 23.10, you can upgrade to that uh, at any time as well. And there is a specific page on upgrading in their manual. Of course, their manual may not be available to you on the minimal install. Hmm, we'll get to that in a bit, <laughs> but let's go ahead and see what we have. When you first load it up, you do have this screen where you can set your internet connection and your language, and you can try it, which is going to send you into the live desktop, or you can go install, which is just going to boot directly into your installer. They are using the Calamaris installer, and one of the things in their bugs at the very bottom down here, somewhere down here, well, I read it somewhere, one of the problems that they had in their bugs with Calamaris installer is sometimes it that it doesn't um, uh, there's times that it doesn't show you the ability to format the disk entirely. I ran into that and look likely it has to do with how is the disk partitioned prior to coming in. Now we have three install modes. We have a minimal install which gives you only the desktop environment and the very minimal things that you need to do basic desktop management. This is the build that has no snaps installed. It doesn't have a web browser either, so you'll have to go into the terminal and install a web browser. Of course, if you go to install Firefox or Chromium, you're going to get snap out of the box. So they, you will have to look at other methods of installing those. If you can install the dev package, if you want to install Firefox without having snap, you can do that. We do have a normal install installation, which gives you the web browser, utilities, office software, a few games, media players. So you have that. Now, I did not see the settings panel for LXQT in that when I played around with it a little bit. I might have just missed it. So just be aware, I'm. it's there definitely on the minimal install. I was looking for it explicitly and didn't see it. I might just be blind. It might be there. I don't know. Uh, the full installation is going to give you a lot of extra packages, in, including the ability to install things like Element, Thunderbird, Virtual Machine Manager, and Krita is what they are using for their, uh, for their editing software for images. So if you do want to use just the bare minimum with no snaps, Lubuntu is a way to do that. Just use that minimal installer. Uh, the Calamaris is... Um, as we would expect it to be and it does work overall pretty good there are some other things that are um, in, included in this for the first time we can 
configure the SDDM, which is the login manager they're using. Now, there's three profiles on this. You can log in under Lubuntu, which is their uh, their Lubuntu-styled LXQT. You can log into a vanilla LXQT, or you can log into OpenBox. All of those are options available to you on the SDDM on the login screen. So you do have the option to use those other uh, other configurations. And to my understanding, one of the uh, tools can export whatever you do in LXQT to OpenBox, but I'm not completely sure about that. I am not a window manager guy. Uh, I like the full-fledged desktop environments, and I have not taken the time to learn OpenBox. So I could be wrong about that. I just got just reading some of the things. That's kind of the uh, opinion that I got. But they do have the PyCom configuration. This is what gives you nice little uh, transparent menus and cute little animations. But if you don't install any of that kind of stuff, this guy runs on a lean 400 megabytes of RAM. So it worked out really well. It was a very snappy system inside of my uh, virtual machine. So the Calamars installer is uh, pretty typical. And uh, here are the bugs. This is what I was looking for earlier. didn't see it. They lacks a way to install proprietary drivers. Now, there is a driver utility in there. So you can go ahead and log in and see the driver utility. So that is perfectly fine. The reinstall on and install on dual boot systems does not offer this. The fix for this would be once you get into your system, run your grub update and that should do that. So it sounds like that's just some misconfiguration in their grub update on the installer is probably what's doing that. And, um, it creates the swap file on manual partition without any warning. This is the one that I saw on my initial install build. And I'll go ahead and uh, put that all, all overlay this as I'm talking here so you can see what that looks like. Depending on how your drive is initially partitioned when the installer starts, you may or may not have the ability to erase the whole drive. That is not something I've seen just in Lubuntu. I've seen that in Calamaris on a variety of different distros. So I think that is a problem with the Calamaris installer, not necessarily Lubuntu. The fix for that, if you're going to install it and you don't have the option to erase the disk, the fix for it is abandon the installer, go into your live desktop, boot up whatever they're using to manage partitions. In this case, it is the KDE partition manager and just go into your old drive that you're planning to install on and just delete everything in there. So what I had to do and maybe what the problem was is there was a swap file and that swap file is locked and so, or a swap partition. I think it was locked. So I went in, deleted everything. I had to unlock the swap partition, delete that. And now I have all free space create one random partition of whatever. I just did an EXT, gave it some random name, save that, re-enter your installer, and now Calamaris should have the option to erase the disk and install. So that is how to fix that if you run into that problem. Uh, and I've, that's not a Lubuntu. I've seen that on a dozen different distros. Uh, Calamaris fails to install logical volume on several conditions when using uh, manual partitioning. So be aware of the manual partitioning does appear to have a few issues. So the uh, change uh, changing monitor configuration next login uh, is uh, there's a bug with that keyboard layout is ignored. Well, that's a problematic. Uh, fortunately, the defaults are U.S. English, so I didn't have any problems with that. But if you're not U.S. English, you might have a few problems. Network manager may try uh, may trace silent uh, application silently fails on incorrect passwords. OK, interesting. So that is our brief rundown of what is in here. So we're going to go ahead and jump on over to the desktop and we will see what this guy happens to look like. So over here we have our Ubuntu, we have our advanced, we have our memory test. Let's go ahead and just boot on into Ubuntu with LX, uh, uh, LXQT or Lubuntu here. And we will be presented with uh, SDDM as our login screen. So if there's a number of different login screens you might see. If you're using GNOME, you'd be more familiar with a GDM. If you're using Linux Mint, uh, you might be more familiar with LightDM. This is SDDM. So up here, of course, in your session, Lubuntu, LXQT, and we have OpenBox. Lubuntu is definitely the prettiest one. I did not go into OpenBox because, like as I said before, I just don't know my way around OpenBox. LXQT is vanilla. It is ugly as all get out. You can go ahead and choose your layouts there if you have multiple layouts chosen. And uh, from here, we'll go ahead and enter our super secret password that's definitely not a one, two, three. 
So I did try and reset the apparently it's not keeping the memory of my uh, my desktop um, uh, screen setting size. So this is where I was looking for the preferences and LXQT settings and configuration center. It's very possible I missed this, but I was explicitly looking for monitor settings. And in fact, I came into this and typed monitor settings. Actually, I think I just typed display settings. So uh, as I said, I'm not completely sure. Okay, I might have typed display settings. Uh, I'm not sure if those settings were in there. I might have just missed it, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and just fix our screen resolution for the time being. Go ahead and hit apply. Yes, that's good. And here is what we have. So this is the minimal install. And so I'll just hit my hotkey here, shift, uh, or excuse me, control alt T for the terminal. And if I do snap and list, you can see, oh, it's not installed. So Snap is not even installed on this system. But, of course, you don't have a, a web browser either. And uh, off the top of my head, sudo apt install Firefox is going to install Snap and then the Snap version of Firefox. So, no, that's problematic. Here we have a file ar uh, uh, file archiver. We have the file manager, uh, PC man file manager. We do have Redshift. And here is your SDDM configuration. So here you can choose whether you're doing Lubuntu LXQT open box. You can choose if you want to automatically log into the session and use the username for the automatic login. Uh, over here, you can enter in some different uh, commands. So what is the state of number lock? Um, over here, we have different theme options. So let's see what the preview looks like. So that's the default. And here's the Ubuntu theme. They look about the same. Okay, that's exciting. So here's users. Here's uh, Wayland. So uh, I didn't double check entirely what session we're using. But we have Wayland and we have X session uh, information in here. So presumably you have the option to use a couple different options there. So let's see what else we got. We have Image Magic. Uh, we have uh, LX Image, Ocular. So we have a screen grab. We have a basic scanning utility. There's Ocular. Here's our Pulse Audio volume control. Here's your H top. And you can see we're running 436 megabytes right now. I've seen that as low as 397. So there's a startup disk creator, and then we have a variety of our preferences. So as uh, the installer said, it does not do any extra drivers. You can go ahead and click on the additional drivers, and that will check to see if you have any other drivers you can do. Bluetooth management, here is the updater. And we can go ahead and check for updates here. Enter our super secret password. And you can see it's going to check to see if there's any updates working. And it'll let us know what's going on there. So nothing up to date, which is probably good. It was just released yesterday. I downloaded it. So no updates as of today. That's good. And as far as everything else, here's your open box settings. So if you want to change some of these. You can go ahead and do that. And this is what led me to believe that there's some ability to change open box easily in the GUI. To my understanding, you had to do that through um, uh, through configuration files. But again, I'm not an open box guy, so I'm not completely sure. And that is about what we have. So nice lean system. Now there is not really a way to install software. You can do software sources, so you're stuck with your terminal. If you're doing the main install of it, the main installation, like the normal one, that comes with uh, Discover, I believe, is the uh, software install package that they're using over there. Um, so let's go ahead and close that guy out there. Just uh, exit out of that the same way you exit out of Vim, colon Q. And that is what we get. So if you were to install the full package, like the normal one gives you the ability to install the uh, the extra four pieces of software, um, um, Element, Thunderbird, and I forget what the other two were. 
If you do the full install, it also installs those as well. And you'll get LibreOffice, Discover, Firefox, and a number of uh, those are set up as snap packages. So there is our brief look over here at Lubuntu 24.04. And uh, with that, guys, if you want to subscribe to the channel, if you've not already done so, go ahead and do that. Leave us a comment and a like down there. And we will see you guys in the next video.